Very well. Matrix multiplication. Let's look at how we can multiply two matrices and get a resulting matrix out of this multiplication. And I just want to say something out of the bat already. Matrix multiplication, it is not an element-wise operation. So it is not just simply multiplying element by element to get the resulting one. The algorithm for matrix multiplication is a little bit more uh, elegant than that. Right. So how do we get the resulting matrix by multiplying those original ones? And just pay attention that I am using these square matrices, right? These two by two matrices. They don't have to be square or two by two. We can have different dimensions of matrices being multiplied together. We just have to pay attention to what those dimensions are. But let's just look at the algorithm that we have to use to multiply. Let's just look at an example. I think it's easier to understand what we have to do. Given that we have these two original matrices, and I'm using two by two matrices for the sake of simplicity, what is the result of this multiplication? So what I'm trying to accomplish is I want to understand what is the result of each one of these entries right here. So the result of this multiplication, I want to find first, what is this first row, first column right here? To find the result of the first row, first column, I'm going to perform an operation with the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. Does it make sense to find the result first row, first column? I am going to perform an operation between the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. What is this operation? It is the first times the first plus the second times the second. So it is always row times column. So one times five plus two times seven. Do you see how I basically multiplied the first with the first plus the second with the second, and then the third with the third, if I had the fourth with the fourth, it is always row times the column and I add everything together. This is the result of what I get from the first row, first column by multiplying the first row and the first column. 1 times 5 plus 2 times 7. This thing right here, if I look at the result, that is going to give us, right, if I add everything, 19. So 19 is going to be the resulting entry of the first row, first column, and I achieve that by performing this first row, 1 times 5 plus 2 times 7. This is how I get to 19 in this element entry right here. And look, sometimes students, they say, okay, Gustavo, I don't remember always, what do I have to do? Is it multiplication and then addition? How do I remember what I have to do with these rows and columns? And I'm going to give you something that I like to use whenever I have to remember what to do with these elements. Look at what we are doing with these elements right here. So do you see? It is the first times the first plus the second times the second. There was a vector operation that was exactly this. The first times the first plus the second times the second plus the third times the third. What was that vector operation that gave us x times x plus y times y? Think for a second. I will give you five seconds. Easy, right? The vector operation that is very similar to what we have to do right here is the dot product. So it's almost like I'm performing a dot product between this vector right here with this other vector right here. So 1 times 5 plus 2 times 7. That is almost like taking the dot product between those two uh, vectors inside my matrix. Right? So always remember. I like to always remember. If you think about the dot product, the first times the first plus the second times the second, and if it was a three by three matrix, then you do the third times the third, always, right? Rows, columns, dot product between those things. I think it's a lot easier if you think about that. Right, so we found the first row, first column. Let's go now to the second row, uh, first column. Let's just see how we find this one. Well, to find this thing right here, I have to probably do this dot product between the second row, first column. So I have to go to the second row, first column. This is what I have to do. So second row, first column, I perform my dot product again. 3 times 5 plus 4 times 7. 3 times 5 plus 4 times 7, absolutely. What do I get? 43, right? Just opening and actually multiplying, adding, just doing the arithmetic here. 1943, this is the result of the second row, first column. 
Right, so let's just go now to this entry right here, which is my first row, second column. So that is going to be the dot product between the first row, second column, which is going to give us 1 times 6 plus 2 times 8. Absolutely easy stuff. That is going to give us, right, if we open, this is going to give us 22. So this is the result of that dot product. And it's still not done. What is the last one? So this is 2, 2, right? The second row, second column. Second row with the second column. This is what we have to do, the dot product between these things. 3 times 6 plus 4 times 8. 3 times 6 plus 4 times 8. Absolutely, this is how we open. The result is 50. This thing right here is the resulting matrix. This is the result of the multiplication of these two matrices right here. This is the algorithm. Right, so just give you an example, I think it's easy. I always like to bring these ideas of making this link between the dot product, between this kind of uh, sub vectors that we have every time that we have to look at these entries. This is how I get the matrix multiplication. Right, this was easy, right? Two by two times two by two, we get a resulting two by two. Let me just talk a little bit about these details of the dimensions of the matrices because we have to pay attention to that as well. So matrix multiplication, we need to look at the dimensions of those matrices. There are some rules that we have to enforce. So matrix multiplication, the first rule that I have to pay attention always is matrix multiplication, it is only possible and it is only defined when the number of columns of the left matrix is equal to the number of rows of the right matrix. This is the only way we can perform matrix multiplication. If this is not true, if the number of columns of the second is different than the number of rows of the second, right? So if the number of columns of the first is different than the number of rows of the second, if these things are not equal, we cannot perform multiplication, right? We're probably gonna have to have an if statement in our method that says, if these things are different, right? If the number of columns of the first is different than the number of rows of the second, we cannot perform the matrix multiplication. We have to just return an error. Right? This is one of the first things that we have to do. I'm pretty sure that everyone remembers this from high school or elementary school. This has to be true. And something else, right? So uh, if I'm looking at these matrix multiplications and I just made sure that this is true, right? The number of columns of the first is the number of rows of the second. I need to find out what is the dimension of the result, right? Of this multiplication. So what is the result, right? Is the dimension of the result? Well, the dimension of the resulting matrix of the multiplication will have the number of rows of the left matrix and the number of columns of the right matrix. So if we look at the resulting matrix out of the multiplication, it's going to have the number of rows and of the first one and the number of columns of the right one. Got it? So this is a rule of the matrix multiplication. We have to make sure that these m's are the same, right? The number of columns of the first is equal to the number of rows of the second. That has to be true for us to continue and perform a multiplication. And the resulting dimension of this resulting matrix is going to come from the number of rows of the first and the number of columns of the second, the left one and the right one. All right, so just keep this in mind. I just want to point out something super important as well with matrix multiplication, which is the fact that if I have a matrix multiplication between two uh, matrices A and B, A times B, it is not equals to B times A, right? It is not true. It is not always equals. So we have to say that matrix multiplication, it is not commutative. So this is super important. Just always remember, if you are in the future and you have to perform some checks, matrix multiplication, it is not a commutative operation. So just keep this in mind. This is super important. Right. I think that is what I wanted to cover from the theory. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if you ever took a course with me with computer graphics, if you ever took a course with me where I actually opened more mathematics, right? Uh, I think you are pretty familiar with these concepts. I just want everyone to be on the same page. I want to be as inclusive as I can with everyone, with every level of knowledge. So just thinking, making sure that we all have this checkbox, right? All these ticks uh, completed. Everyone needs to understand 
commutative, right? It, it is not commutative. We need to understand the rules of the dimensions of the matrices. We need to understand the algorithm that we have those, the idea of performing the dot product between the rows and columns. I want everyone to be on the same page.